the Lucky Hansi tape. Hello. Before settling out for America, I thought about how would I want to return? On a white horse, in a beautiful uniform, or in a huge American car. As a 20 year old, those were my fantasies. In the rainbow press, one could read about Hans Teichert, who left America in the 60s. As a millionaire, he returned to the medieval town of Rodenburg, Germany. He was most welcomed with his dollars and was allowed to buy the old castle jail. There were more tourists than criminals there, and now they had a fantasy prince to show off. Lucky Hans, a Saxonian from Chicago. Lucky Hans, a Saxonian from Chicago. Hans and Gloria came to Rotenburg for the first time on their honeymoon in 1956. They had a special reason for visiting old churches in the town. Teichert had been instrumental in buildings and restoring churches in Chicago, copying Gothic art for the new world. But as Teichert matured, it drew him back to the land of the old masters of the Middle Ages, like Tillman, Riemenschneider, and Friedrich Herrlein, who made Rotenburg famous. Hans and Gloria have been honorary citizens of Rotenburg for the last 25 years. The tourists that spent only one day exploring the old town do not realize that the couple is one of the town's treasurers. Only special visitors, journalists and photographers have access to the well cared for Rotenburg Castle. A high German government official felt it safe from terrorists as Soraya, the future wife of the then Shah of Persia, did from reporters when she secretly met her betrothed during their courtship. But we should not stray from our fairy tale of Hans Teichert from Chicago in America, the land of dreams for many poor Europeans. America, das Land für viele arme One of them arrived in 1920s from Dresden. Einer von ihnen kommt im Jahre in those days, Dresden. Chicago was the city of the mafia the mafia and speculators. And a mecca for architects and builders. For instance, the city train was built in 1897, shortly after the famous fire destroyed the city. For the World Fair in 1893, the city was rebuilt. In only three decades, a new city was built, driven by American pioneer spirits and the hard labor of European immigrants. Hans Teichert spent half of his life here until it drew him back to the old world, to a town where less had changed since the Middle Ages than in Chicago, in the 35 years that Hans Teichert had lived there. Miraculously, Rotenburg had not been bombed during World War II. Chokingly, people imply that the reason for that was that the set was needed for Hollywood movies. Hans Teichert's parties in the refurbished old castle least are reminiscent of Hollywood, still to this day, even though he is now 88 years old. <laughs> As his wife makes the introduction, we look around 
She's introducing Mr. Riethausen. Der Anlass für diese Party wird noch nicht verraten. A generous Sehen wir uns etwas um. rustic buffet. Die Gäste sind exotisch. Great hostess. Das the buffet artwork ist rustikal und authentic. Reichlich. Lucky Hans tells us that he comes die Gastgeberin from generation of interior painters so come on, John. Let's, let's that have skillfully decorated homes from flying und Hans im Glück erzählt uns, angels and was such mit dieser Kunst verbindet. all in the taste of the time of course My sich Hans Teichert's father decorated the palaces of the Saxon aristocracy and passed his skills on to his son. Hans developed these skills to his trademark in Chicago. In his advertisement, he uses the picture of an old European castle, stating that his family has decorated palaces of the European elite for five generations. Hans Teicherts Vorfahren hatten die Paläste des sächsischen Adels ausgemalt. Sein Vater erlernte Hans sein Handwerk. So Chicago's elite, sein europäisches not having a history of their own, Tradition entwickelte er and trust the taste and Chicago. skills of the Saxon with the internal decoration of their exquisite homes. In einem Inserat wirbt er mit einem alten deutschen Schloss und damit, dass seine Familie the journeyman interior painter from Dresden teaches the high society of Chicago European culture and offers his service as the designer. So society with plenty of money but lacking tradition appreciates this by starting Hans Teichert's brilliant career. Der Malergeselle aus Dresden belehrt die Gesellschaft von Chicago über die Wohnkultur Europas as early und as 1928 als und an. he opens his office in the prestigious Wrigley Building society, in, in the heart of Chicago Welt, aber noch wenig gibt, weiß zu Hans Teichert is the talk of the town and Hans invitation to his parties are highly desired Schon 1928 hatte er ein eigenes Büro im Wrigley Building mitten in Chicago. Hans Teichert ist stadtbekannt, seine Partys haben Stil und werden gern besucht. In Rotenburg versammelt in Rotenburg, Japanese, und amerikanische Journalisten, Chinese and American journalists have gathered for Champagne and Art and for information about the foundation Pure Water. While Gloria, backed by Teichert, is president of this foundation designed to help man, mankind. The public relations coordinator is a Saxon from Washington. He formally worked in a press position at the White House. He introduces Hans Teichert aus seiner Biografie. And the journalists get to hear amazing details from his interesting life. Was Hans Teichert alles eingerichtet hat, wird aufgezählt. He lists his accomplishments in the designing churches, movie theaters, bars, as well as in famous speakeasies for the time of the mafia in Chicago. Not er würde es nicht zugeben, meint der Pressemann, that Hans Teichert admits it, but that is probably how he makes a large Chicago portion of his fortune. In 1928, Hans Teichert uses the ticker tape parade 
honoring the first Atlantic crossing by the German airline Lufthansa to present his company and his German background to the American public. His float in this parade exhibits Germanic motives. During the time, my poor English with the heavy German accent were an advantage, he says. The German workers and craftsmen were the highly respected and desired. Eight million Germans immigrants come to the U.S. in the 19th century, at times the strongest ethnic group in Chicago. Eight million Deutsche waren im 19. Jahrhundert ausgewandert nach Amerika. In Chicago sind sie zeitweilig die stärkste Bevölkerungsgruppe. The Germania Club was the central meeting place for Germans in Chicago before World War I. The all the leading positions in the city were voted on by Germans going to Germans. But then, during the war, the Germans started to denounce the heritage and started changing their names. Nach zwei Weltkriegen in Europa hat sich Amerika abgenabelt. Chicago is now metropolis, ready for the future. Metropolis geworden. Hier findet permanent Zukunft statt. The new future. Lasst uns eine Stadt bauen. Lasst sie uns Put this city up. Lasst uns eine neue Stadt finden. Tear city down. Sagt der Dichter Karl Sandberg. Put it up again. Let us find a city by Karl Sandberg. Hans Teichert hat ihn gekauft. Hans Teichert knew this order of this line. Wir suchen seinen Chicago in den 20er Jahren und finden sie im Computer der Historie. We are looking for the Chicago of the 20th century in the computer of the historical society. 50 Jahre. The memory band of the city. Fifty years are a long time to remember. Here, it is rare that even a building lasts that long. Even museums are not much help, but photos, films, and recording through those the Roaring Twenties come alive again. The gang wars, the liquor smuggle, during the Prohibition, here all this was not part of the Hollywood movie, but real history, and Hans Teichert was there. Yes, I met the gangsters, we did the famous nightclubs, like Chez Paris, they were all More than 25% of population went to the movies at least once a week. In 1927, there were more than 20,000 movie houses in the USA. In the glamour of the grand opera houses of the old world, baroque castles, gothic 
cathedrals, and palaces of the Orient. None existent in this country were nonetheless used to inspire the construction of these temples of vision. More than 100 premier theaters were in Chicago. 35 in the center alone. Kino, Schauspiel und für Musik. Das Gabeck Theater mit zwei Now the Gabeck Theater ist heute ein Parkhaus. I have decorated and painted. Now is a parking garage. Die Fassade des Oriental, das Lager eines Electronic Shops. The, the warehouse of an electronic firm hides behind the facade of the Oriental. Other theaters have been refurbished to be supermarkets, television studios, or shopping malls. Some had to make room for skyscrapers. Little Heidelberg, also designed by Hans Teigert, was the meeting place of the theater crowd of Chicago. But one theater in the heart of the city is still used as a theater, the Chicago Theater. Once it was the birthplace of the theater chain of Balaban and Katz, which started in 1908, before the time of the movie houses as a Nickelodeon. The developers wanted to build a theater that would last forever. The name Chicago for the theater was the representative for class, elegance and quality of the entertainment it was to offer. Hopefully putting it into the leading position of all other establishments of its kind. Und seine architektonischen Opulenz verkörpert es den Geist der Stadt, deren Namen es trägt. This is all Hans Teichert's work. It's excellent. As the city changes fast and brutally, the theater undergo constant surgical facelifts. Is this development the cause for Hans Teichert's escape back to Germany, back to his fairy tale town? In Chicago, I have worked at all of the movie houses. Most of them have been torn down. Others have been divided into two or four small theaters. In America, everything is always changing fast, especially in this industry. There always have to be new ideas implemented even when this is unnecessary. In their force is a new owner, for instance, there has to be a new concept. I redesigned one theater three times. Now there's only photos left of the grand time of Teichert's work and his movie palaces. The place now shown on the screen, this palace of silent movie area is still standing, only because the investors do not yet agree on the future use for the building. However, the citizen trying to save the Granada, but little chance for success.
Dieser Palast der Stummfilmzeit steht noch. Er hat eine Galgenfrist. Die Spekulanten sind sich noch nicht einig. Uptown, 10 miles north of the city, home to less affluent Chicagoans. There also is a theater of the movie chain Balaban and Cats, owner of most of the movie houses in the 20s. Im Uptown von Chicago, the Uptown, the city, wo heute die might be safe from the wreck wrecking ball. Der der A Ballard true Katz, movie enthusiast, also participant at the Chicago Film Festival, has made das Uptown it his der mission der to save this piece of American der history. Mitarbeiter des internationalen Filmfestivals von Chicago hat sich vorgenommen, ein Stück amerikanischer Geschichte zu retten. This theater was built in 1924 at a cost of four million dollars then. That would be around 88 million dollars now. Provided you could find craftsmen to be able to do that kind of work. That is all my work. I built it murals, painted, redecorated. Which now would be somewhere close to 88 million. 1924 entstand dieses Haus für 8 Millionen Dollar. Heute würde es 88 Millionen kosten. Hans Zeichert says the architects put together a horrible mixture of different styles in periods to create something they believe to be elegant. Physically, it was supposed to be to create a fantasy setting so that people would be able to escape from their drab lives. In the spring of 1990, a full restoration would begin to be just like the day it first opened. Now to be used as a concert facility for anything from Broadway shows to rock concerts. In the spring of 1990, we're going to start a full restoration. The theater will be returned completely to the day it opened. Shown of frescoes by Hans Teichert from the year 1928, the Chicago Theater. Fresken von Hans Teichert aus dem Jahre 1928. The house seats 4,000 people during the time of the silent movies. Eight showings sold out each and every day. Each screening was accompanied by an orchestra of 30 musicians. Now there will be music here again. But no more movies, musicals, operetta, pop, and rock concerts are planned, just as it is so successfully done downtown. Four thousand Sitzplätze hat das Haus. Acht ausverkaufte Vorstellungen täglich während der Stummfilmzeit. Now we are entering the Chicago Theater through the front entrance to see the premiere of the Chicago Ballet. Citizens save the building. It was renovated in 1981 and has since changed owners four times.
Eine Bürgerinitiative hat das Haus gerettet. There are no government grants for cultural projects in the USA. Viermal hat es den Besitzer gewechselt. To raise money, the building can now be rented by private organizations and companies for affairs in an elegant and festive setting. The frescoes by Hans Teichert have been restored to perfection. Die Fresken von Hans Teichert wurden originalgetreu restauriert. Hans Teichert painted and decorated the Chicago Theater in 1933 at a time when in his home country monumental changes were taken place. His work was not supposed to last more than 10 years. After that the movie industry believed it would need something new. But Hans Teichert's Moses were allowed to stay. Teichert's art helped the American public forget the fact that America culture heritage came from Europe. Mit seiner Kunst half auch Hans Teichert. Das Publikum darüber hinweg zu trösten, in 1930s, dass die in Hans Teichert was well known personally as a designer, interior designer and artist. In the giant murals that he created for the Chicago's World Fair of 1933, depisted the urban society of the new world. In den 30er Jahren there are only black and white photos left of that time. Color photography was not used yet. Unfortunately, this piece of Hans Teichert's work is gone as well. 1933 schuf, paraphrasiert er Hintergründe der Gesellschaft der World Fair, along with the exhibit of the Chicago Gas Company, which Hans Teichert. That was the Madonna was painted by Leonardo da Vinci's favorite student, Andrea Salai, but the baby was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. And my husband found this painting and had it in his art collection 30 years before, come with me, <laughs> come with me. <laughs> To really make an evening unforgettable, the greatest treasure is brought out of the storage in the Rodenburger Bank, an original by Leonardo da Vinci, the only one in private possession, Madonna and Child. Teich had found it in 1954 in New York. Here is the original by Leonardo da Vinci. This is the only painting in private collection in the world. The einzige Leonardo da Vinci in Besitze eines privaten Sammlers. The art world was turned upside down and the press all over the world had a field day with headlines like Weiss painting worth in excess of one million dollars for four hundred fifty dollars. Of course, headline. Kaufbild für 450 Dollar ist ist wert mehr eine Million. In unserer Innenzeitung. Das ging durch die ganze Welt. Was haben Sie denn mit Ihrer Kunstsammlung? What are your plans for your art collection upon your demise? Well, we found it pure water. Pure water. Gegründet. Ich denke, wir vermachen das mal zu Pure Water als zur Fante. I do not know what will in fact happen. Being the older one, 
I will surely die before my wife, and I will be leaving everything to her. She can do with it whatever she pleases. Gloria, the former beauty queen from Canada, she has had everything a woman could worn for, wants to use the collection to collect for a good cause. She wants to use the Da Vinci Madonna to fight as Mama Gloria for clean water all over the world. Maybe she should even take the painting to Tokyo. Meanwhile, the guests are reminded that they are in Bavaria and are being served by an American hostess. From her kitchen, Gloria Teichert rules the foundation and she uses wonderful foods like this cake to advertise for this event. For instance, she has hired an American astronaut. James Urban, a NASA pilot after his mission to the moon, now works for a good cause on Earth, a gala event for the foundation Pure Water in the town of Rodenburg. We don't have time for all these long stories. Just tell me how much you love me. And <laughs> oh, I love you, and God loves you. And he's given you a special mission. He sure has, and you too. A very special mission. Der NASA Pilot James Irvin. During intermission, the astronaut signs autographs and Gloria Teichert exhibits how to effectively use her husband's art world to advertise her cause. I bring you greetings from the moon. The astronaut says, Greetings from the Moon. She gives the astronaut a valuable icon for presentation to the town of Rodenburg. Rare, important Russian icon. Ich möchte Ihnen hiermit diese kostbare russische Ikone überreichen. The icon was donated by her husband, Hans Teichert, whose generosity supports the whole program. I give, I owe everything to him because it's really Papa Hansi behind the whole water program. She says I owe everything to my husband. Papa Hans is behind everything. And what does Hans Teichert, lucky Hans, have to say on this evening in Rothenburg? I have had a wonderful life, worked hard and lived to a ripe old age of 88 years old. I am content with all that has happened to me. I plan to be cremated and I want my ashes buried here in the monastery of the Franciscan in Rothenburg. There are already monuments of my wife and myself set up.
I also have my barrel speech recorded. When someone comes to visit, after I'm gone, my wife can play it for them and I can speak to them from the grave. Would you read this for us? He was asked. He said, I would love to, but it vanished. Can't <laughs> you